Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and we're continuing to celebrate Blade Show Week even though the official Blade Show has been canceled. And I'm really thrilled today to be hanging out with SE Knives. They've got a new fixed blade to show us and I've got Shane here remotely to, uh, to show it off to us. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. How about you? Doing all right. And, and I said you're going to show it off to, to us, but I've actually got the, uh, the prototypes here. So you're going to talk about it while I hold it up, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. So, so here we go. The official unveil, or the there official Knife Center unveil anyway. Tell us about this little piece. This is pretty much the, the official unveil other than uh, I did a reveal a couple of weeks ago on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, so before I came on staff, um, our little CR 2.5 just kind of just kind of hung out in the shadows and obscurity for the most part. And um, I took a shine to that knife and I really enjoy that knife. Um, and, and because of that, it got a lot of publicity uh, as I do all the social media stuff. Uh, I row a drift boat. Uh, I don't typically carry a large fixed blade. Um, and this knife just fit a really nice spot for me. Um, so I guess we're going to start with a history lesson. Uh, <laughs> then we'll talk about the new stuff. Um, but it, it took a little while for people to really understand the, the durability and the use of this knife. One of the things I like about this knife is that it's about a finger length. So if I'm using it to uh, field dress an animal or something, it doesn't become a liability to my other hand, which is uh, up inside there doing work. So I, I, come to, I came to really like this knife, and it, it found a special place for me. Um, at SHOT Show, Cody Rowan and Sean Rowan and I sat down, and we started to talk about uh, revamping uh, the CR 2.5 and, and Cody had been working on a handle design that was really sharp and what we wound up seeing. Um, we had obviously debuted our S35 VN knives and that was, this is, we felt like one of the places that absolutely would be a good fit for that. Um, and as we're going through, I said, look, if we're going to, if we're going to redo this knife, let's add a half inch to it. Let's give it a little more cutting surface, a little more cutting length. I think a lot of people like that three inch blade that seems to be a, um, a sweet spot. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what you have there is it's the same, same thickness as our original CR 2.5. We've added length to the blade. We've added a little length to the handle. We've given it um, 3D contoured scales, both in G10 and micarta. The one you're holding up there is our G10. I've got that uh, and, brown canvas, uh, and, and then well. that's the it's called rustic brown. It's the same same color that we use on the PR4, the JG3, um, some of our other uh, Camplor series you, knives. Don't you have the? Uh, I think one of my favorite versions of the new uh, contoured handle SE6 has this color on it as well. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it's yeah. a really nice, and, and it has a really nice texture on it. It's not a it's not super aggressive, but it's got a good texture on it. It's got a, a pretty good palm swell. It's got some really nice contours. Uh, and, and so um, it makes for a, uh, it's a little more hand feeling, a little more ergonomic than the first. And then you've got the, you know, the added blade length, which I think will, will check a lot of spots for a lot of people. I think it is like a kind of a just right little size. Um, as you know, the, the comment section here likes to give me grief because uh, I always say I have slightly larger than average size hands, but I can still get a full four finger grip on mm -hmm. this handle right here. Even with the, uh, the, uh, the down sweep here at the end, mm -hmm. it, it feels exceptionally comfortable, especially considering its size. Well, if you're processing an animal, a lot of times you might choke back on that and, and just make some broad strokes for caping. And, and that's where that little down sweep comes in. So it gives you a good little purchase right there. Yeah, I could see that, uh, absolutely. Cody actually, uh, they, you know, the Rowans live in Idaho and uh, he had killed an elk and was uh, processing an elk in the field and the knife he was using just wasn't getting it done. And he actually came back and designed the original uh, 2.5. We have listened to a lot of customer feedback on, on, um, on that knife and, and, a lot of, and listened to a lot of the barriers for entry. I've heard a lot of people say I never would have considered that knife. I've pushed a lot of people into it. Most have been happy that we did or that I did. Um, it's been, a, it's, I think, a hidden gem in our lineup. Uh, it is for me, certainly. Uh, yeah, it's it's this, always definitely been a very effective <clears throat> little blade, but I think easy to overlook for someone who, mm -hmm. who kind of isn't in the know. 
this this new 3.0 shape, I think I think it jumps off the page or the the screen maybe a little bit more readily, uh, and maybe we'll get a few more folks using uh, using one of these as a result. Well, it certainly has vertical in the original 2.5. I mean, the original 2.5 is kind of an ugly knife. It's not a very inspiring look. It well, brings, I wasn't going mean, to say it. <laughs> well, we're okay with the truth, uh, but but you know, we're a company that makes tools. Is, is kind of how we oh, look yeah. at it. We're not it's we're not big work. into aesthetics. That's pretty pretty obvious with uh, a lot of our blades. <laughs> Um, but we, I mean, it is what it is, you know, but at the same time, we do make tools that we can, we feel good about that are tools and that work that way. This knife not only has a better aesthetic, uh, it functions well. And I think it's going to check a lot of boxes for a lot of people. One place I see this knife doing very well, uh, given its small footprint is, uh, I think you will see the EDC community really jump behind this blade because it is such a small footprint. Uh, I've taken some knife instruction, knife fighting over the years, and I had an instructor that said knives are made to be felt, not seen. Uh, this knife has the ability to hide and to be comfortable. You know, it's, I think it's Clint Smith said a, a gun is, uh, what is it? It's not supposed to be comfortable. It's supposed to be comforting. Um, <laughs> I like that. So, so you have to kind of dress around a gun if you carry every day. Uh, there are certain uh, comforts that you have to give up. Uh, for everyday stuff in order to be, um, I guess, as squared away as you should be. Uh, but that doesn't mean that, that you have to carry a large six inch knife and dress around it. This knife will allow itself to, to be discreetly worn and placed uh, in a lot of different places. And I think uh, with its small footprint, still effective, the S35 holds a great edge. Uh, I, think, I think a lot of people are gonna, gonna really take a, take a shine to this one. No, I, I agree. I, as soon as I saw it, uh... I, I was pretty taken with it myself. Um, I, like I said, I, I love the aesthetics of it. Um, in addition to it, you know, everything you guys make is a very effective little knife. Um, so I, I like seeing a, a little bit nicer looking too, I guess I should say. But I like the, um, this particular handle shape on this blade. You know, it is, it is just a lengthened version of that original. But with this handle paired to that, I think it really... It reminds me more of some of the uh, the old school Pucos uh, Scandinavian mm -hmm. knives. It kind of leans into that, which has always been there in the 2.5. It's now just a little bit more apparent uh, with this design. Well, you're hitting close to my heart on a Puko. That's a that's a design I continue to push hard for. Uh, I love a Puko. Um, I, I love the solid state, simple designs that are just made to do one thing, and that's cut. And and so a Puko, whether it's full flat or Scandi. Is something that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, one of my favorite knives that I use a lot is a LT Wright Camrat, you know, which oh, sure. is just a straight Puko blade. I have a Puko that was designed and made, and made by James Gibson, which is another one of my favorite knives. James is a knob creep forge, one of our designers, but he does a lot of custom work too. And, and um, uh, that's something down the line I would love to see. Um, I think with the release of, of our 3D scales and our updated line at SHOT Show this year, and then the debut of S35, uh, and then these knives, it should send a message to our customers that we're listening and we are, we are moving. Uh, we will always stay true to who we are and what our ethos is when it comes to making tools. Uh, but at the same time, we are trying to refine our craft and refine our offerings. Sure. Um, and this knife, I think, is a good a good step forward. I agree. Now, talk to me a little bit about the <clears throat> S35. I know you put that out uh, earlier this year on the three and on the new fixed blade Zancudo. Mm -hmm. um, and I know initially you guys had a little bit of hesitation about expanding that further into the lineup. Um, mm -hmm. What's it sounds like that's not the case anymore. So what uh, what kind of changed your mind, if you don't mind me asking? Uh. So we're 1095 guys. We're, we're the, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, Jeff in fact, and these Mike, prototypes are protos in 1095 right now. They are in 1095. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the, the availability S35 has been pretty tough. I, like the gun industry, the knife industry has run par fairly parallel to the gun industry in that we've seen that boom. Uh, I guess people didn't expect the zombie apocalypse to come with, uh, internet service so so we've seen a lot of increased in sales and which means an increase in uh demand for for raw materials um so s35 uh we hardened it to, to 60 and, and what we have heard over the years is that 
customers have asked for better edge retention and stainless. And we made a conscious choice to give them that. But like anything, there's this yin yang relationship to edge retention and stainless. Uh, uh, we could have run the rock down a little bit and made the knife more durable, but we would have given up a little bit on, on edge retention. Um, Patrick and I literally beat the brakes off of these S35 knives early on, and we broke one and we made a video about it. It's our best. It's our highest viewed video, uh, but we broke it batoning, you know, a three, an SE3 through seasoned red oak to, we were just exhausted almost. Then it finally broke it. Well, it broke, obviously broke at the end because you can't test it when it's broke <laughs> anymore, but we were done. Um, and so we made a video about it and we've tried to be very, very clear with our customers about the expectations. We want to build hard use knives. Uh, but not everybody uses their knives like we do or 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 could. Uh, yeah, obviously, the, the the debate about batoning is is long and, and well documented and will never um, end. And we no, well, we don't want it to. Uh, and and we're a, a, you know I carry an axe or a hatchet most of the time. That's why I can go in the woods with a knife this size. Um, and and so um, we're not oblivious to that. To that philosophy but we do want to know that should we have to use our knives in a way that is outside of what they're designed for we want to know how much they can take so we do our i think we do a good job of testing them we were uh reluctant for those reasons not just s35 but any you know higher rock will stainless uh but we we found some comfort level with it after we just beat and beat and beat on our, our s35 offering especially in a thin blade like the sc3 um it's been very well received by our customers. We've had very few warranties and, and honest to God, 99% of our warranties come back. It's a bonehead move. It was a situation where we all knew that we're using this thing, you know, well outside of the design parameters, uh, probably 80% of them are broken tips. So we all know that knives make the, the worst, most expensive pry bars. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we see the most. Um, as we've gotten more comfortable with the process and, and with the limitations of the steel, uh, we see the positives in expanding this S35 in places like the 3.0, uh, something you're, you're going to see, you're going to see some expansion into some other of our smaller knives. We don't feel like it's, uh, you won't see it in like the SE5 or SE6, we're looking at some other deals. Uh, we are constantly evaluating new steels. I'm, I'm a bit of a, I'm the steel snob in our company where I'm constantly trying to evaluate things and see where we want to go. Um, but uh, I, I was hoping to debut some things, but I, I can, I'm going to tell you, this is a first that you will see our Azula in S35 and you will see our SE4 in S35 coming up. So we're replacing our 440C knives with the S35 uh, and we're pretty excited about that. You will also see an AGK in S35. I think so those are some great applications in, in the lineup as it exists right now for that steel. I think those are really well considered choices. Well, the, the Ashley Game Knife uh, and the CR 3.0 to me seem like no brainers, mm -hmm. you know, and, and given that we're, we already have the Azula in place uh, and, the, and the SE4 in place with stainless, it just makes sense to do that. Uh, the MLA will stay 440C for now, our rescue knife, uh, and we'll see where that goes. Um, but we are looking at other steel applications, and I know people are going to, you know, we're going to see a ton of comments on, on you know, they want Ramalama Ding Dong steel, and they want this and that, you know. It, it, we'll get there. Just be patient. So. <laughs> CPM Ramalama Ding Dong. Oh, yeah, yeah, CPM yeah, yeah, Ramalama Tool Steel, whatever. We got it. We got it. You know, I always say in our videos, anything that we do on our YouTube page is like, we hear your comments, we understand, but it's going to be at our pace. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, you don't want to put anything out before you guys are confident. I mean, no. especially when you consider Essie's warranty, you know, lifetime, no questions asked. You got to be sure what you're putting out there is going to last. Even beside the warranty, um, we feel like we are a company of doers. Um, I, I'm, I'm the marketing director. I'm doing this interview from my, from my dining room table. Uh, I don't have a desk. I spent over 100 nights in the field last year and probably 150 days total last year in the field. 
we build our knives for those people that spend time in the field. And it's important to us that our stuff works. Mm -hmm. And, and so with that, um, the the warranty factor is second, you know, because we feel like we're putting our best foot forward and building a product that, that will work for our customers. Then, then the warranty is kind of a moot point for us. It's just, we're going to stand behind it. We can't stand behind it. Then the warranty doesn't matter. We're not going to put it out anyway. Right. Right. We got a couple more questions about this knife specifically. Um, like I said, I know this is the prototype. One thing that the 2.5 has uh, that I know a lot of like bushcraft folks and survivalists especially appreciate is that crisp spine for striking a fire steel. Is that going to carry through to this knife? It will not. Uh, I, unfinished, believe this or not, unfinished knives require way more time and expense in finishing than say our coated knives. Uh, that knife has to spend a lot more time in the tumbler, which means it naturally rounds off the mm-hmm. edges and some other stuff. So this one will not have a 90 degree spine carry your, uh, Swedish light my fire, uh, that already has a striker with it and we'll be fine. But that of course is going to make it more comfortable for the EDC crowd or your hunters who are getting up there with their finger. Cause you're not going to have to worry about that crisp edge so much. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I like the 90 degree spine. That was one of the things I didn't really want to give up, but just through the process, uh, in order to keep the knife, I mean, it, it's, it's not an issue of cost and material. It's just an issue of man hours and, and labor sure. in order to, to, to get that back. And, and if you take that, the, the edges get so rounded. If you take that spine down to 90 degrees, you're removing that, a lot of metal at that point. You, Take away a lot of metal, but then you also run into an issue with fitment on the scales and other stuff mm-hmm. as well. Sure, sure. Um, and what kind of sheath is this going to come with? Typical leather like the rest of the Camp Lore series? No, or? we're, we're going to have a, a new injection molded sheath, mm-hmm. and we're also working on some Kydex offerings. Okay, very cool. And that's going to be helpful for those folks who are doing or who are, who are looking to carry that EDC, throw an ulti clip on there, it could go in the pocket, that sort of thing. Yep, and I've also, uh, Matt at Armatus, we work a lot with Matt at Armatus Carry. Um, we just can't do everything for everyone. We actually like injection molded for a couple different reasons. Is it doesn't thermal cycle like Kydex. Uh, we make the molds. It's more cost, it's a, gosh, more uh, cost effective mm-hmm. for us. Um, but it's a great sheath too. We just, the QC is so sharp on, on, our, on our injection molded stuff that it's, it's hard for us to, to go away from it. Everybody wants, you know, a sheath done this way or done this way, or they want to carry it. So we love to support the secondary market. I think, you know, we love, I'm, I'm the type of guy that likes to modify just about anything I get. Uh, and, and many of our customers do. So we support the secondary market. We're happy to support a lot of our secondary makers that makes them exclude for us through arms carry. I'm working with Matt pretty closely on trying to, um, come up with like a, like we talked about, that really spelt package, that really small footprint package that could be worked uh, in a pocket uh, or or inside the waist belt. Uh, and so that's something we still have some uh, some R and D to do. Sure. Uh, but uh, I'll be working with him pretty soon so that he'll have an offering and we could possibly sell sell him in our exclusive whiskey yeah. true hide or whiskey tan whiskey true hide color. Yeah, I mean, it's hard enough to come up with a knife that everybody likes. To come up with a knife and a sheath that pleases everyone is impossible. <laughs> it's impossible to come up with a knife that everybody likes. Just don't even, we won't even start on the sheath. So <laughs> so we make what we like. We hope our people our people like it. And, and we know that, you know, not every knife can be everything to everyone. And we're okay with that. That's why we make, you know, over 300 SKUs. <laughs> yeah. But the, but the new one is the 3.0. Great little design. Small outdoor companion blade, small hunting knife, EDC, small kitchen knife, camp kitchen. You do a lot with this little shape. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a it, for me, I don't need a, a six inch cutting surface a lot of the time. A lot, oftentimes, I need just a small little bit of cutting surface, and that has more than enough for me. For sure. And uh, the knife I need is the knife I'll carry. Uh, and, and so for me, that that's what uh, I, I'm really excited about this one personally. I am too. I like it. All right, I've got one more question for you, and you you probably uh, touched on some of these things already kind of throughout, um, but we're going to bring it all together uh, as a great way to close out the video. For those out there who have not tried an SE knife before, what makes you guys special, and why should they be looking at an SE now? We're really not that special. <laughs> 
Uh, Come on now. <laughs> well, it, here's the thing is um, we don't believe we're that special. Uh, we're, but we are a company of that has been built on using our tools outside. We started as a training company in the early 90s, and we, my, Jeff and Mike, uh, backed into the knife industry, quite literally, because they design products that work for them. We've been very fortunate in that we've gotten a toehold in the market for people that appreciate that design. Um, I think there are a ton of good companies out there. Um, uh, and uh, uh, just a ton of there's so many options in the knife industry and, and so many good stuff so many good companies out there we're happy to be in the conversation and for us um, I think the most important aspect of our business is that our customers trust us to put something out that they know we'll back and stand behind uh, and, and so for us um, that trust is the most important thing uh, I mean we appreciate Obviously, we appreciate people buying our stuff, but but we're not going to put something out that we don't stand behind, um, not because it's a fiscal decision or a financial decision, but because it's it's just what our company ethos is about. Um, so for us, we take a little different slant on things, and, and we move slow, but we are moving, and we are responding to customer requests. But it's taken us some time to get comfortable with that. And we're going to do our due diligence and test stuff. And so when we put something out, um, we're going to stand behind it. If we screw up uh, or we see an issue with it, we're going to communicate effectively and honestly with our customers about that. And uh, you've seen that in the SE3 video. Uh, we try to communicate expectations. And, and our most important thing for us is our company, uh, for our company, is, is that consumer trust that we have been very fortunate to build a business on and we're not going to do anything that goes against that. Sounds great. All right, folks, thanks for sticking around with Shane and me here uh, and checking out this new knife. Make sure to let us know in the comments what you think of it. And of course, we will leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com where you can see all of Essie's stuff, including the latest and greatest. Shane, thank you so much for taking part of our Blade Show week here. I really appreciated you having to, or you coming on here. Hey, we appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, guys. All right, guys, stick around. We got more great Blade Show stuff coming.